Whoa, we say hallelujah. We say hey, amen. And the sound of the saints come and march on to Zion saying hallelujah. Amen. All right, Mouth Pagers, I am live. It's Thursday night. Wow, it's Thursday night. Crazy. Wow, look how fast this month is going. All right, let's check us out. Let's see where we're at. I know I'm live because I see my mug on the little screen down there. Let's check the website. Come on. Let's not be scared. Let's do a sound check. Testing, testing, testing. Woo, all right. Welcome everyone who's joining. All right, let's see here. Where are we at? All right, time to straighten up. It's after seven. So, Mal Paters, well, let's go ahead and kick it off. Uh, how am I looking? Do I look beautiful? Okay. I see everybody's on. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Shalom. Welcome to our show. It is Thursday night, so that means it is Yom Hamashi. Welcome. Happy Thursday. Hope everyone's had a great day and a great week and ready for the weekend. I know I am. I am exhausted. This has been a long week. Tomorrow, I will not be doing my Shabbat service because I have to be traveling tomorrow. So I'm going to be exhausted again. So pray for me. I will give you some updates. I'll probably just do a quick little, just say, hey, shout out to everybody tomorrow on my phone, just like I did on Saturday, just to keep you guys connected with us, just so you we all feel loved and connected. So, all right, let's kick it off every Monday through Thursday. We do our live weeknight motivations at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Friday. With the exception of this Friday is our Shabbat service at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So for those of you who are new to our community, our weeknight motivations are designed to help each of you get motivated from a hard day, a hard week, and get ready for the week ahead. I try to make them short and powerful. Usually lasts about 15 minutes, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. My wife told me that I've been going a little bit longer than 10 minutes, so I changed it to 15 so it's not in the 10 minute side. So a little over 15 minutes, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. All right. We've been going live now for 71 weeks, 71 weeks. And we are now over 87,800 diehard mouth pagers liking us on Facebook. Wow, we are almost to 88,000. I know we can do it. Let's keep pushing. Our goal is 100 by the end of the year. We're going to easily succeed that, pass it. I know we're going to do it. So I hope you find our community a place where you can grow spiritually. we got a lot of things ahead of us. I am really, we're, we're rebuilding everything that Mouthpage is doing because we're growing so fast. By time Rosh Hashanah in September for the new year, the Jewish new year, we're going to have a new website, a new face, a new look. Everything's going to change, new background. We've got it all ready to go. But keep us focused, everyone. We can do this. Okay. Without further ado, let's do Psalm 156. But all that breathes, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let all the breeze praise God. Hallelujah. What's up, Mary? I saw you just jumped on in the last second. All right. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So here we are. We've been doing walking the desert. So today's part four. Awaken. Last night we did inspiration. This is important because we're talking about walking the desert. On Monday, I kind of 
briefly, quickly went over on how do we feel when we walk the desert. It's a metaphor. Walking in the desert can mean a lot of things. Could mean loneliness, could mean stress, could mean exhaustion, could mean thirsty, starving, could mean a lot of things in your life. Things that you have to overcome. So tonight we're going to talk about Awaken, another part of walking the desert. I'm going to read this from the Mishkan Tefillah. As I awaken, let this be my thought. May my day be filled with acts of kindness. Let me be drawn to learning and discernment. Sorry, my glasses are fogged, so I'm having a hard time. And may my actions be shaped by God's commandments. Okay, so what does all that mean? We've got a whole bunch more, so hang tight. But my thoughts may be filled with loving kindness. Okay, walking the desert, life is going to kick you. And if you allow it, it's going to kick you again. And it's going to kick you repetitively. It's going to kick you more and more and more. If you continue to let it, you're going to be a nub by time life kicks you. So when you awake every day, are you going to walk the desert and complain about the desert? Are you going to complain about all the things you do not have? That's a question mark. Are you? Are you going to complain about your desert? Or are you going to make the best of the situation? Think about this. In Exodus, the Ten Commandments, right? The movie, the story, the book, the Jews got set free from slavery. They crossed the Red Sea and now they are alone in the desert. That's where I got the desert. They are alone. They have to start over from slavery. What do you do? Every day, you've got to find something. They're complaining. They're angry. They look everything as the glass is half empty. They're looking at everything in a negative way. But when you wake up, your thoughts should be love, kindness, generosity, positivity. I will never forgive myself if I don't find positive things in my life. You have to do it. You have to find the positive because evil comes at you in so many different forms and shapes and sizes, death, illnesses, sicknesses, hatred, bulliness, everything. And that is our desert today, people. That's our desert. If we continue to allow it, that desert is going to, the sun of the desert is just going to melt our skin and we're never going to survive. But when you awake, you can change your desert. Your desert could have snow in it. Could you imagine walking the desert and all of a sudden it starts to get a little windy? And you have to wear a coat because you're so cold because it's snowing? That's my desert. My desert is I make the best of every bad situation. That's my desert. I'm always going to find a kind situation in everything. Today was such a tough day. I felt like I was in slow motion. I was looking around for Charlie Chaplin because that's, I felt like I was an old in an old movie with nothing but silence. But I continued to go through it. I was looking for my snow. I was looking for my desert to have moisture. Okay, let me give you the next part of this. Keep me from disgrace and sin. May I not be overwhelmed by temptation or despair. May I not be overwhelmed. May I not be overwhelmed. May I not be overwhelmed with temptation and despair. Right there. When you're walking the desert and the sun is beating down on you. In your desert. In your metaphorically speaking desert. When life is kicking at you, the sun is beating down at you, and you are hungry, you are thirsty, you are lonely, you are miserable. 
This is when you make mistakes in life. This is when you mess up. This is when we challenge evil. This is when we show the best side of ourselves. God made us this way. We're going to have a lot of bad things happen to us. And this is when we have to make a difference today. This is when we have to make it count. We're going to be overwhelmed by evil sometimes. And you know what? We're just going to have to, like in the old, what, 90s, give evil the hand. Because I am not listening. No more to being overwhelmed. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I am not going to let evil overwhelm me anymore. The sun is going to be overclouded with happiness. And sunshine is going to be consumed with joy. I'm not going to be heated no more. I am not going to be miserable and sweat because I am not going to be overwhelmed by evil no longer. I'm not. That's my attitude. My desert looks really different. So my metaphorical desert looks like a Christmas scene on Hallmark. That's my desert. It's cold. It's fun. Everybody's happy. We're all got presents. We're all eating candy canes and gingerbread cookies. That's my desert. All right, part three. Distance me. Now, this is me asking God, right? Distance me from evil people and false friends. Let me find life and all its goodness. So, right there, distance me from backstabbers from poisonous, cancerous people. Now, when I mean cancerous, I'm not meaning the sense like, oh, you have cancer. I don't want to be by you. No, no, no. Cancerous is metaphorically for people who are not good for you, meaning that it's a slang for, whoa, you're bringing me down. You are bad for me. I don't want you near me. I don't. I don't want to be around you who are evil to me. I don't want to be around that type of situation. Get me away. Get me away. So how do you do that? you got to find the good in every situation. If Just like the Israelites who were stuck in the desert, here we are telling about it. The stories about it. Why? Because someone in the desert, Moses and Aaron, right? Someone in the desert found some good and was able to spread enough cheer and joy to the people to where they continue to pass it on. We have to do the same. We cannot allow evil to conquer us. We cannot allow evil to wear on us. We cannot allow every little thing to bother us. Our desert has to change for the good. Mine is Mine is awesome. When you come into my desert, you're going to be like, wow, I don't gain weight here. I can eat ice cream here. I can have hot fudge just dripping down my mouth. That's the kind of desert I created. So my desert, even evil doesn't want to come to my desert because it's so awesome. He's like, wow, he won't even come to my desert. But other people's deserts are so vulnerable. They're so open that just evil just pours in. I won't allow it. You also cannot allow it. Your desert, no matter how hard, no matter how painful, no matter how horrible your desert is, it can easily change in your favor if you want it to. Today, and every day, may I have your mercy. By living my life with compassion and love. So when evil's kicking you, when you and people are flipping you off on the road, and when your boss is yelling at you, and when you're having a horrible day, you're going to continue to live life with compassion and love. 
you're going to be nice and help others to be nice even when others are not now could you imagine a place where you're nice and someone else isn't and you're still nice even when no one they're not that's hard to do it is it's hard to do but there you go so here we go everyone last portion of this we have to take away from this we have to understand this is part four walking the desert our desert is what we make of it see we hear the word desert we all know what it sounds like desert hot dry long boring exhausting right you just think of yourself as soon as you say the word desert you could always you could already imagine yourself wearing like no shirt shorts no shoes you got a towel around your head and you're walking and you got a canteen and you're just like Ugh. you I, I could already see myself doing that but as I'm starting to visualize what the Israelites did for 40 years in the desert and how they made a brand new life out of them out of the desert and for themselves God put them there so they can rebuild God made sure that where they were they were so far away from people that they had a chance to rebuild themselves but they were also fighting amongst themselves God's like, come on, people, you don't have a lot of time here. Before you get to the other side, you have got to work together. You have got to find teamwork. Don't you worry about it. I will give you food. I will give you water. I will give you shelter. But you've got to work together. For 40 years, God's like, hey, calm down, everybody. Stop getting so mad at each other. Well, our desert's the same way. Because think about this. It might not be 40 years. You might just have one bad day and it ruins the rest of your year. One bad day. Was 2017 the worst year of your life or was it the best? Is 2018 great or not so great? How is it? How is that one year? And during that year, are you pointing fingers at God? Shouldn't you be pointing the fingers at at evil because when bad things happen we're blaming someone we want to blame God why when God's been teaching us all this time and when bad things happen all of a sudden we throw in the towel and we're like oh it's God's fault whoa wait, wait 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 why is it God's fault God's helped us for so long now one bad thing happens in your life that ruins everything and now it's God's fault wait a minute i used to be like that i used to be like that oh there's no such thing as god because look what happened but then something changed in my life my desert got so dry it got so hot and i wasn't wearing anything because i needed everything off in order for me to walk to the next stage of my desert but then i found God, all of a sudden, I had my clothes back on, I had water, I had food in a desert. I had horses, I had snow, I had cars, I had planes, I had everything in my desert. Because with God, I made everything possible. Your desert, your life, is what you make it. Without God, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. And evil knows it. And evil's going to work you. Evil's going to play you around like a puppet. But with God, your desert is going to be amazing. And you'll know it. That's the difference. When you walk your desert, you cannot walk your desert alone. You can't. You need a partner. Partner with God. God will get you through everything. When you think that you're tired, and when you think that you're worthy to give up, God will give you drink. God will throw his slash her arm around you. 
and say, it's going to be okay. Come on. I'm with you. Let's go. Get up. Here you go. Drink up. Eat up. Let's go. We can do this together. And all of a sudden, life, no matter what everything else is going on around you, it's not going on with you. No matter how evil, like for me, I can go outside, I can see all the evil, I can watch the news. It's not affecting me at all. People can hurt them, each other, but they're not going to hurt me. I'm with God. My desert is amazing. I've got amusement parks. Even Disney's jealous. That's how amazing my amusement park is. Man, Water World in Colorado. Man, my water park's better in my desert. They can't even touch it. No amusement park can touch my desert. That's my desert. I created it. It's mine. Nobody can touch it. With God, your desert can be all that. It's metaphorically because in here, that's the best part. All right, I love you all so much. All right, before we end tonight's motivations, I'd like to close with prayers and birthday wishes. There are a lot of healing prayers right now. Man, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. So let we need all of our prayers. We've got over 87,000 people. We need to push it hard. We need to pray very hard to help other people. First of all, if you need any healing prayers, shoot me a message contact at mouthpage.com. Tell me a prayer request. I will put it on there. Shoot me a text message. Shoot me a Facebook message. Shoot me an email. Whatever it takes, I will put it on there. All right, healing prayers. To Mary, to Jim, to Elsie, to Arthur, to... Jesus' family, a uh, loss of um, her father today, to Rabbi Bill Curry's family for the loss of Rabbi Bill Curry, a dear friend of mine, to Virginia and battling cancer, to Scott, to Suzanne, Juanita, Misty, Rudy, and upcoming surgery, Linda, Megan, Laszlo, Tony, Susan, Vicky, Yusef, Yoel's Vicky, Juanita, Jesus, Juan, Molly, Mike, Andrea, Andrea, Anthony, Adam, Johnny, John, Larry, Pete, Betty Ann, Maria, Marco, Manuel, Brett, Barbara, Janet, Duani, Keisha, Latanya, Kachabi, Cliff, Joe, and Tanya. And happy birthday to Darla, to Kenya, to Eddie, and to Kali. How good and pleasant is it for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. I love you all so much. And thank you so much for being the best part of Mouthpage. Mwah. Help others to be nice. I'm not doing our show tomorrow because of my travel schedule. I apologize, but I will see you all Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. Help each other. Remember, be nice. I love you all. Don't forget, mouthpages.com. Check us out. Don't forget to donate as well. I love you all. God bless. Lala Tov. Amen.